Do you suffer from anxiety or paralyze yourself with overthinking? Let's deal with this topic right now. In this video, I want to keep it short and sweet today, but I want to talk about what anxiety actually is. Can we do anything about it? And then yes, give you three simple steps that if you apply them really can dramatically ease, if not completely cure, that anxiety. So first of all, what is anxiety? What is overthinking? Well, anxiety is the body and mind's natural response to things that threaten us or make us feel afraid. Unfortunately, our brains are wired to, generally speaking, look in terms of the worst possible outcome more easily than think about the best thing that can possibly happen. So anxiety is something we all feel, all humans feel it, but we feel it to very different degrees. And if we feel anxiety too much, then it becomes deeply embedded in the subconscious mind and it becomes a habit. And the more deeply embedded that habit becomes, then of course, the harder it is to break. Breaking habits takes roughly a month, sometimes two. But if these habits become really firmly fixed and anxiety really takes hold, then what happens is anxiety itself becomes a habit. And even when there's nothing to worry about, the brain will find a way of creating a new problem and creating something to worry about. And then of course, in time, this can lead to being an anxiety disorder. And some people may need professional help for that. So can we cure anxiety completely? Answer, probably not, because to be honest, it's part of being human. It's part of our natural fight or flight response. But what we can do is we can learn to ease it and make our lives far more manageable. And we can really stop worrying and start loving life again, which of course is, is what it's all about. Let me give you three ways, three things you can do immediately that if you apply them can really ease anxiety and make your life a much happier place to be. Number one, did you know that the brain is very, very good at making accurate snap judgments? What happens when you first meet a new person, for example, is the brain takes a very thin slice of information incredibly quickly. Now, this thin slice of information is incredibly accurate and usually on the money. But then what we do is we start thinking about it. We start fudging it and confusing it. See, thinking is incredibly overrated. And that gut instinct, which is what we tend to call that slice of information that the brain takes in a snap moment, is something we can usually depend upon. Do I mean you should always go with your first judgment, your initial first impression, your, your initial instinct? No, of course not. But it does mean that you need to attach some value to that first thought, that first judgment. If you can do that and listen to that snap judgment, then you'll find yourself avoiding needing to go into that overthinking process. There's a brilliant book called Blink by Malcolm Gladwell. And in here, he talks about using the left-hand brain and the right-hand brain and how we can most effectively learn to trust that first instinct. That's number one. Number two is about how we displace anxiety with something else. Now for this, I'm going to use the biggest extreme I know about anxiety, and that's panic attacks. Have you ever had a panic attack? A panic attack is where the brain has got so anxious that there's nowhere else to go, and so it starts manifesting itself physically in you. And this may mean you become short of breath, and you literally start to panic, and you can't breathe, and it's just completely and utterly physically and mentally overwhelming. How do you deal with this? Number one, know that you won't die. That sounds very blunt, but when we're in a panic attack, we believe we're going to run out of air and we might literally die. You won't die. That's the first thing. Knowing you won't die is usually enough to take that initial pressure off you. Then, as soon as you can engage in something spontaneous or creative or loving, do so. Maybe the simplest thing to do might be to go downstairs and stroke your, your dog or get your hamster out of its cage, or something that makes you feel love, something that's cute. And that will engage your spontaneous right-hand brain, which will displace the left-hand brain, which is where all the anxiety is coming from. If you've got the energy and maybe looking longer term, it's always good to engage in something creative. I've just bought an easel and loads of paints and paintbrushes. 
Can I paint? Not for love nor money, but I'm going to give it a go because I'm always looking for new ways of being creative. But for some that might be doing the garden or cooking, baking bread, painting a picture, listening to music or just engaging in meaningful conversation. And that creative process will displace anxiety because creative energy requires the right hand brain, anxiety requires the left hand brain, and ne'er the twain shall meet because these two parts of the brain cannot function simultaneously. That's point number two. Point number three is for when it's slightly too late. You've already got yourself into a really anxious state and you feel yourself going into that pit of despair and maybe, maybe this is just before you might have a panic attack, hopefully sooner than that. And what you need to do is two things. The first is remember that the inner critic, those intrusive voices, the intrusive thoughts in your head are not really you. They're just your accumulated baggage over years and years and years. But what you can do practically about this is develop an action which for you means stop. So you might go, stop. And what that actually does is it reboots the neural pathways in your brain. So it's as though you've been driving the same route to work for years and years and years, and you drive there on autopilot. And by saying stop, you're breaking the autopilot, which is the anxiety habit, and allowing yourself to take a different exit. And then what you need is a coach. Well, you won't usually have a psychotherapist or a counsellor right with you at the time. So be your own coach and say to yourself, right, I've said stop, I've done my action. Does this way of thinking serve me? If it doesn't, work out what would serve you and as your own coach, tell you to take that new mental route. But the key there is to say stop. But I'll tell you a thing, 20, 30 years ago, if someone said, Nice to meet you, Sheridan. I'd say, nice to meet you too. Oh, how are you? I'm a bit of a worrier myself. And I would pretty much introduce myself as a worrier. And if not, I'd bring it early into the conversation. Now I've changed that identity. I'm not really a worrier anymore. I'm pretty laid back, pretty chilled, but I do spend a lot of time talking to other people who have anxiety disorders. So I hope this helps. Speak to you again really soon and bye for now.